just spent almost an hour recording a video only to look back at the footage and find out that my voice wasn't being picked up by my microphone. Oh my god. All right, well, I guess I'm gonna have to do this again. So we're here on Modern Warfare 3. The open beta has gone live for all PlayStation players this weekend. And then the following weekend, the open beta will go live for all players on all different types of platforms. Sledgehammer ended up adding Rust to the playlist update for this weekend's beta, so I am looking forward to playing more of it and just getting a feel for how Rust plays on this game. I do want to talk about some things regarding Modern Warfare 3 as these are things that I like, but at the same time, I still have my criticisms for it. In past Call of Duty games, you would start off with 100 HP, but in Modern Warfare 3, you start off with 150 HP. It's refreshing to say the least because in past games, in past games, when you started off with 100 HP, the time to kill was so, so low that you would get rinsed regardless of what weapon you were getting killed by. So it is nice to see that the TTK has increased in Modern Warfare 3, which gives you more of an opening to be able to recover from getting shot at and have another chance to outplay your enemies. Slide canceling has indeed returned, albeit it's not the same exact slide canceling as it was from Modern Warfare 2019, but I understand why why that is the case, because Sledgehammer is working with Infinity Ward's updated engine that they use for Modern Warfare 2, and because the engine was designed in a way to where slide canceling was not viable by any means, Sledgehammer had to figure out a way to work around that to make it viable for the player to utilize. So I am appreciative of the fact that slide canceling is in the game because at the end of the day, players should have more choice over how they want to play and how they want to outplay their enemies. I can also say the same for reload canceling. As in Modern Warfare 2, you had to wait for the entire reload animation to play out and then get back into the gunfight, which honestly was one of the most annoying things about playing the game. But the fact that you can indeed reload cancel in Modern Warfare 3 is pretty nice. Albeit, it's still not as good as it was in past games, which is mainly due to the fact that this is still Infinity Ward's engine that Sledgehammer is working with, but at the same time, the fact that reload cancelling is possible in some way, shape, or form is very nice to see. Get off from there, man. Like, get down from there. I do like that map voting has indeed returned in this game, because one of the biggest issues highlighted with the removal of map voting is that the developers have had to create multiple 24-7 playlists for specific maps. If you look at the feature playlist for Modern Warfare 2 this week, there are five, five 24-7 playlists for four different maps. I have never seen anything like that in the history of Call of Duty. Normally, the most 24-7 playlist that would be implemented into a future playlist update would be two, but the fact that there are now five for four different maps, it really just goes to show that map voting should have never been removed from the game to begin with. Because why bother taking choices away from the player to utilize for them to be able to decide what kind of map they want to play on? It's honestly just so ridiculous. And the fact that we had to wait, the fact that we had to wait two years for map voting to come back is freaking sad. But it's nice to see that map voting has indeed returned. So good on you, Sledgehammer. I like the fact that the traditional minimap has returned because it allows the matches to flow and play out a whole lot better in comparison to past games. The removal of the minimap has been a big talking point amongst the community toward the developers. For those who do not know, the minimap in Call of Duty worked in a way where if you were shooting a weapon that was unsuppressed or you weren't using any form of perk that would prevent you from getting caught on a UAV, you would show up as a red dot on the minimap. Out of the four Call of Duty Duty games that have released throughout the last four years, the only Call of Duty that has given us some form of a traditional minimap was Vanguard. And even then, we got that back through a perk. So it's nice to see that Sledgehammer has brought that back in Modern Warfare 3, which is going to allow matches to flow a whole lot more easier, and it will allow more players to engage with enemies for, for there to be faster paced matches. Wait, why am I playing on a state? I'm out of here. Movement in this game is much better in comparison to Modern Warfare 2. For example, mantling. Mantling in Modern Warfare 2 felt so complex because of... Not only because of the fact that you mantled so slowly onto various objects, but also the... 
but also the implementation of ledge hanging. It just made mantling onto objects a whole lot more difficult for players to be able to navigate around the map flawlessly. Whereas in Modern Warfare 3, ledge hanging is still in this game. It's only limited to specific objects that require you to jump higher than you normally would. But all in all, mantling around the map and maneuvering around specific objects is way faster than in any other Call of Duty game. I would even argue that mantling in Modern Warfare 3 is the best that it has ever been been in the history of the franchise. So even though Sledgehammer had to work around specific parts of the engine to give us what we wanted, it is nice to see that they have included the ability for us to be able to move around as freely and as flawlessly as we want to. Bunny hopping hasn't been as frequent as it has been in past games, and even if it was, you can't really bunny hop that well. So... I do appreciate the fact that movement in this game is much better in comparison to Modern Warfare 2 because every time you moved around that game it was always like your it was always like your soldier had a pair of cinder blocks attached to his feet. But the fact that that's not the case in Modern Warfare 3 is very refreshing to experience. I don't like the fact that there is a 1 second delay when you slide cancel. So, for example, in Modern Warfare 2019 after you slide canceled, you immediately could run. But in Modern Warfare 3, that's just not the case. Albeit, I understand why that is the case. Engine that Sledgehammer is utilizing in Modern Warfare 3, it's designed in a way that slide canceling is not viable. So they had to work around it to ensure that it would be viable for the players to utilize. Damn, man, move! In the system, Modern Warfare 2 was so strong to where the game was basically doing the job for you. You never felt like you were getting any better at the game, and it was largely due to the fact that the aim assist was doing all of the work for you. You can never really see yourself growing as a player when locking onto enemies and killing them with ease, because aim assist, as I mentioned, has been doing the work for you, so you never really felt like you were getting true control over how you lock onto enemies. The user interface in Modern Warfare 3 is still very similar to that of Modern Warfare 2, albeit Sledgehammer has tweaked it a bit to make it a bit more easier for us to navigate through. But at the end of the day, the user interface isn't that great because I don't want to be navigating like I'm trying to navigate on a streaming service. The maps in this game, even though they are remasters of the original Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer maps, I do think that they play a whole lot better due to the fact that there is advantage due to the fact that there is more modern movement in comparison to what we got from the original Modern Warfare 2. I admire Sledgehammer's ability to stay true to the original to the original versions of the maps while simultaneously trying to modernize it to make it feel new. All in all, I like what Sledgehammer has. I do appreciate the fact that they are indeed listening to the community and are trying their best to give us what we have been wanting. Because for the last year, we've had to deal with Infinity Ward deliberately ignoring us when, in regards to the feedback that we have given them on how Modern Warfare 2 could have improved. But unfortunately, because they're so stubborn to cater to what the community wants, Modern Warfare 2 is just not fun to play almost a year later. Now begs the question, are we back? To be honest with you, no, we're not back. We still have skill-based matchmaking and engagement-optimized matchmaking. If you do good, if you do really good for the first two matches, the third match you're most likely going to get squandered by the enemy team. While it is nice that we are getting 16 multiplayer maps at launch, none of the maps are new. They are just full-on remasters of the original Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer maps. And once the honeymoon phase is over, it's only a matter of time until players start pestering Sledgehammer to start making brand new maps that are built for a game like Modern Warfare 3. It's also this talking point where players still do not want to see lobbies be disbanded because what happens is if you because what happens is when you get to stay in a lobby with the same players for multiple matches ahead you're able to develop a camaraderie with those players and develop friendships that could last a long long time 
We used to have something like that with Call of Duty back in the day, but unfortunately, because of the fact that there is some form of skill-based matchmaking and engagement-optimized matchmaking, disbanding lobbies has become so prevalent to where it's almost impossible for us to be able to form friendships with players who we played with or against. It's no different with Modern Warfare 3, and I doubt that's ever going to change in the future because, realistically speaking, Players have been vocal about this for the last four years, and nothing has changed. Even though there have been little strides at the same time, it's mostly been the same as it has been all these years. The biggest issue that I have with COD multiplayer nowadays is that when we get a fan favor feature back, there is another one that gets taken away from us. If we get another fan favor feature back, another one gets taken away from us. We'll say this though premise of what Sledgehammer is going with with Modern Warfare 3, I can honestly say this is the Call of Duty that we should have had throughout the last year with Modern Warfare 2. And the fact that we had to, the fact that we had to wait a year, hell, even a few years to go that far, to get some to get the things that we the community have been very vocal about for the longest time it really just goes to show just how incompetent the call of duty developers are in staying true to the core fundamentals of what makes call of duty multiplayer fun and engaging for us the player to experience but i will say this i do like what sledgehammer is going with in modern warfare 3 but it's on them to build upon what they got going with here and just doing their best to be on top of what the community is demanding, giving us the majority of the demands that we want to see for Modern Warfare 3, and so forth. For now, Modern Warfare 3 is a pretty decent game. My expectations have remained the lowest they have ever been, but after experiencing it for myself, I can honestly say Sledgehammer is doing their best, and I appreciate that. But I want to know what you guys think. Have you played the Modern Warfare 3 multiplayer beta? Do you like it? Do you not like it? What are some changes that you would like to see get implemented as we go into weekend 2 of the beta, but also as we get closer to launch? Let me know in the comments down below. I want to know what you guys have to make of this. But anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, you're more than welcome to hit that like button, and if you enjoy this type of content, you're more than welcome to hit that subscribe button along with that bell notification so you could be notified of when I have uploaded my newest video. If you still happen to hear some echoing in my video, I apologize for it. I'm still currently trying to tweak my audio settings to ensure that it doesn't happen again. But with that being said, thank you all so much for watching. It's been your boy Discreet, and I'll catch you in the next video.